You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow a side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews. So let's get started. It's Nikayla here, back with another solo episode. And not only is it a solo episode, but it's a special solo episode because it is my one year anniversary of Side Hustle Pro episode. Woohoo! I can't believe it's been a year, honestly. I feel like it's all gone by so fast, especially this year. And Prior to recording, I felt like I should come on here today and say something really profound and like have all this dissected knowledge and insights on what's worked, what hasn't. And because of that, I felt kind of nervous to record this episode because I felt like, what do I have to say a year later? I wanted to do all this deep reflection and introspection and write it all down like I'm used to doing. But honestly, a lot of it has been, first of all, a blur. And second of all, just me, mental notes, grinding, course correcting as I go, as I learn what's working, what's not. And I don't come up for air often enough to take notes and reflect on how this all came to be and how it's all going. So thinking about doing a anniversary reflection episode, I was like, oh boy. So I did what I always do when I'm not sure how to approach an episode. And I polled the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community. So I asked the community what I should talk about and touch on in this one year anniversary episode. And shout out to the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community and everyone who's a part of it. And shout out to the questions and comments that you guys left, because I plan to address most, if not all of those And if you're not a part of the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community, you truly do need to join us over there because it's like an extension of the podcast where we continue the conversation. So just go to sidehustlepro.co slash Facebook to join us there. So let's get into it. One year of Side Hustle Pro. I think to reflect on everything that has happened in the past year, I really need to go back to where it started. And for those of you who haven't listened to that first episode where I kind of shared my story a bit and shared why I was starting the podcast, I'll remind you that I started Side Hustle Pro with a mic and a dream. And, you know, here we are a year later, but it all started when I graduated with an MBA, but no job. I went to the University of Michigan for my MBA, Go Blue, had a phenomenal time, studied marketing, studied business, learned so, so much. And between my first and second years, also had the opportunity to intern at Google in Mountain View doing ad sales. And after that summer, I learned that I didn't get the full-time offer to work at Google like I thought I was going to do and and then end up going there full-time. So that kind of threw me into this tizzy where I started to reevaluate my career choices and what I wanted to do next. And, you know, I was pretty dejected because that's supposed to be one of the main reasons people go to business school and to get their MBAs to come out with this bomb job, six-figure salary, that is what you want to walk away with when you have your degree. So to not have that big, impressive job, I was feeling pretty bummed. And when I graduated and moved back to D.C., in addition to looking for a job and doing some part-time consulting on social media projects and marketing projects, I had started to wrestle with this idea of doing my own thing, doing my own social media and marketing consulting practice. But I just, I couldn't quite pull the trigger, right? I just, I didn't see myself as an entrepreneur, even though I went to school and there were other women of color, particularly my roommates who were going after it, who were pursuing the unbeaten path and going after entrepreneurship. I just didn't see myself as an entrepreneur. And maybe it was because I grew up in a very traditional Jamaican household and, you know, business and and traditional career roles were always emphasized, but I didn't see myself as an entrepreneur. But as I dug more into this mindset of why I didn't see myself this way, it's because I just didn't see myself represented in the narrative of entrepreneurship. I saw a narrative of entrepreneurship that featured white men 
white millennial men. I mean, just look at the TV show Silicon Valley, right? Like that is what you think of and picture when you think of entrepreneurship. So I just couldn't pull the trigger. I still wanted to like gain some more confidence and motivation and figure out how I could work for myself. So I started to look to other people like we all do when we need inspiration. Look to other people who look like me and particularly people who were side hustlers. Because another thing I was not about to do was be broke and trying to figure it out been there, done that, not again. (laughs) And that is what led me to start Side Hustle Pro. And originally it was a blog under another name. And I was unemployed, interviewing people, blogging, finding my joy. I ultimately ended up getting a full-time role that I decided to take on in social media marketing. But I just couldn't let go of this path that I'd started on because I realized that that bug was still in me. I knew I wanted to do my own thing one day. And I knew that there had to be other women out there that needed to hear these stories. So that's when it grew into a podcast And it just, you know what? I like to say that it snowballs, but when I really take the time to look back at it, it wasn't just a snowball. It was very much a gradual process. So I started recording in my living room. I wrote a whole blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes about how to start your own podcast. And all the steps that I list there are exactly what I did. So, you know, the microphone I use, the programs I use, GarageBand, what I use to edit, like Everything that I did is in that blog post. So the technical aspect of it, once you really sit down and study it and watch the videos, it's not that hard at all, at least for the basic independent podcast. Like I'm not saying you're going to sound like, you know, like you work for one of these major podcast publishers at all. And I don't sound like that, right? Like you can definitely tell that, but you can definitely tell the stories and share the stories of people. And that's what people are hooked onto. So that is how it all started. And someone in the Facebook, Side Hustle Pro Facebook community asked me to talk about my growth. So I chalk it all up to consistency. So Side Hustle Pro started just like every other independent podcast with a few hundreds of downloads in the first week, right? Like it, then that was what family, friends, and maybe a few people they told. It was not a lot of downloads at all. And, but I didn't know better either. So I'd never started a podcast before. I didn't know what anyone else's podcast numbers were. So to me, it was like, oh my gosh, 300 people listen to this. Wow, that's cool. Like every time an episode would come out and, and, you know, of course, every week the numbers would go up and up. It was exciting because it was a new milestone. It was the first thousand. It was the first two thousand. And that's why you'll see I would share these milestones on Instagram because it was exciting to me, like that first 50,000 downloads, the first 100,000. And now we're about to cross 400,000 downloads. Like that's the next milestone within a year. And for an independent podcast, like that's pretty darn cool. And that's pretty, uh, that's a big um, accomplishment. So I, I have to toot my own horn there. But the number one thing I chalk it all up to is consistency. So I knew starting out that I was going to podcast for a year straight. That was my goal because, you know, people say it takes 21 days to establish a habit. It takes longer than that for me. I don't know about y'all, but I could do something for 21 days and then quit. (laughs) I knew I needed to set myself a goal that was long enough that I would get into a true, true, not only habit, but, but just it would become part of my life, my very existence. Like I can't Imagine life now, not doing the Side Hustle Pro podcast, not figuring out my next guest, not booking that interview and recording and publishing and promoting like it's become a part of who I am. And that is what will lead to success when you keep doing something over and over again. You're building on the downloads because every person who downloads your podcast and shares it with someone else, that means the next week you have a higher number of downloads. Once they've subscribed, that means every week you're getting a minimum number of downloads because those people who have subscribed, that's being auto downloaded on their podcast when the episode is released. So um, I don't have any like magic pill that made Side Hustle Pro start to get more and more downloads. It was really just consistency. And also not being afraid to reach out to my network. When my initial episode dropped, 
I sent an email to everyone in my network. And this, I have to emphasize, was a one-time thing only. I even said that in like big, bold letters in the email, like, look, I am not spamming. I do not believe in that. I just thought, you know, each of you guys have crossed my path at some point in my professional and personal life. And I thought you should know about this new project that I'm really passionate about and that I'm doing. And if you'd like to subscribe, here's the link to subscribe to stay tuned. And that was it. That was it. But I put myself out there and emailed everyone in my network. And when I say network, I mean every single person I was connected to on LinkedIn, every single person that I had an email for who I knew personally or professionally. So that was number one, not being afraid to put yourself out there. And also, speaking of putting yourself out there, you also got to be very comfortable with sharing your wins. So I talk about Side Hustle Pro a lot. If you are friends with me on Facebook, if you're friends with me on LinkedIn, if you're friends with me on Instagram, if you're friends with me on Twitter, I probably talk about Side Hustle Pro like the most out of anything that I talk about, right? And that's because people will come across your timeline and feed at different times. You never know if you might be 50 episodes in and that might be the first time someone has ever heard that you do this thing called Side Hustle Pro. Like you can't take for granted that people know about what you're doing. You have to talk about it. I don't mean you should be like beating people over the head, but like every time I release an episode, you know, I'm sharing or every few episodes I'm sharing with my group, I'm sharing with my Facebook community. When I hit those milestones of 100,000, 200,000 downloads, like I was sharing that with my network because it's, you can never take it for granted. Always recognize that it took hard work to get to those accomplishments and share it, show that you're proud. But what you're also doing is keeping people informed and people start to think like, hey, like her little, her side hustle, you know, first they think it's like, oh, her little, oh, that's cute, her little thing. And then they're like, oh, wait, like this thing is serious. Oh, wait a second. This thing is like legit. And, you know, it just goes on from there. And then before you know it, even the most like checked out person will tune in or just check out an episode or share it with someone else who they think might find value in it. So definitely share your wins, promote what you're doing, let people know about it, be your own hype man, be your own publicist. Those I think are the major keys to Side Hustle Pro's growth. Again, no magic pill, but you cannot grow without that. Some people ask me to talk about my hits and my misses. Um, I want to start with my misses. <laughs> I guess I like to, you know, I'm that person that always wants the bad news before the good news. So the misses and what went wrong. Oh, my goodness. This year has, it's been fast, but it's also been a roller coaster. I think the biggest thing I would say that went wrong is not having enough control over my emotions. It's like, I'm a very emotional person. And everyone always says that entrepreneurship is a war of the emotions. And it really is because you can have days when you're like, oh my gosh, this this sets me on fire. This this like speaks to my soul. This brings me so much joy. And you're just like pumped about it. And then you have days when no matter how much you love it, like it feels like a chore. It feels like another job. And you are, you want to call it in like you would at something else that doesn't have your name on it. But you realize that this does have your name on it. And so you have to give it, each and every time. So it's like breaking through that emotional barrier of being able to do work when I don't feel like it, when I'm having a bad day, when, when something really discouraging has happened. That has been a challenge for me and a miss for me. And I would say I don't succeed at that as much as I want to. So that's something that I'm still working on. Because of that, you know, there have been weeks when Side Hustle Pro episodes have been late. There have been weeks when show notes have been late because of that, just the war of the emotions, war of the energy, balancing my energy. And let's say I had a really tough day at work. There are a lot of shifts that have happened in my job this past year. And when I have a really challenging day at work, sometimes it's hard to detach and decompress from that in time to get to work on something. When something's not due the next day, 
it can be hard to not just, okay, I'm just going to curl in bed tonight and just recover and not even think about anything. And you, and you can't do that. You can't do that if you want to continue growing. So it's something I'm working at, but I would definitely say that's been a miss. Something else that has been a miss for me is focus. So I haven't focused enough in the in the beginning. I switched this. So when I released that episode about focus one side hustle at a time, I was really preaching to myself because if you recall, when I opened up Side Hustle Shop to sell like my Side Hustle Pro t-shirts and other entrepreneur t-shirts, I started to go really hard on that. And what that does is it took time away from the core thing that I do, which is this podcast. And that's not to say that I'll never do um anything beyond this podcast because that's far from the plan and and not what this is all about. But I was spreading myself too thin and spreading myself too thin in an area that just I wasn't fully invested in. Like I I was just not fully invested in being this e-commerce like, you know, dynamo takeover kind of woman. And I just had to realize that like that was a path that that wasn't worth the energy I was putting into it. Like that was just not the path to monetization that I needed to be taking. So that was a miss for me trying to start out this whole e-commerce arm. Um, I'll probably still have Side Hustle Pro shirts available um, for the future and ongoing, but I I don't know if I'll build out anything else to do with that shop. It'll just kind of be like a nice to have if you'd like to support kind of a thing. And that's that. So you you gotta you gotta know when when to fold them, like they say. <laughs> Another miss would be balancing the full time job and wedding planning. Kind of similar to what I said before about balancing my energy, not being a strong point. Balancing work and wedding planning has been a complete miss. Like I there were times when wedding planning would fall by the wayside and, you know, our invitations went out really late. Um, People would be asking questions about what what is this? What's happening with this? What's happening with that? And a part of me just felt like, leave me alone. (laughs) Like when I am overwhelmed, I don't want to deal with things and I just kind of pretend they don't exist. But you can't do that because the thing is still there waiting for you, even if you procrastinate or not. So I've had to learn to do a better job of balancing that. And that usually means having days where I only focus on wedding planning, having days when I, you know, put Side Hustle Pro first, having days when the full-time job gets my complete attention, you know, even even in the evenings, which I usually say for Side Hustle Pro. So that's just something that you have to figure out the ebbs and flows of life and figure out what works for you. If I could do it all over again, though, even with the misses, I wouldn't do anything differently. This whole process has taught me so, so much. I think I needed every challenge, every blow to happen for me to just grow in who I am and what I'm doing. Um, But as far as hits, because now I'm starting to feel like depressed, like focusing on all the things I do wrong and all the ways I'm missing. So I'm going to change gears and think about the hits. So. Side Hustle Pro has been really transformational for me and a wonderful experience, mainly because it started out of a time when I was feeling really low about myself and I was getting rejection after rejection. And what that does to you, even if you're the strongest person and mentally strong and and everything, when you get rejection after rejection, you start to doubt yourself. You start to forget what it is you do well and I was in that place. I was in that place where I was comparing myself to other people. I was regretting decisions I made in business school. Like, why didn't I take that class? Or maybe I should have done what that person did. And and it just started out of a really low place. And what it's done for me is allowed me to remember that I am good. I am talented. I do have strengths. I have skills. And damn it, I was put on this earth with God-given talent that I meant to use to impact other people's lives. And that has illuminated so much for me. I know without a doubt now I have this purpose and commitment and light in my eyes where I may not know where this is all leading, but I know 
that I have a purpose on this earth and there's no more fulfilling feeling than that. So Side Hustle Pro, the biggest hit for me has been finding purpose, finding truths about myself, regaining confidence, remembering that no matter what happens, no matter what any job, any boss, any company tells me. And and that's another thing, too, because I was coming from a place where other people were telling me I wasn't good enough. Like, that's why you get rejected, right? Because you're being told you're not good enough. So coming from that space and now being in a place where I know that no matter what you say, I know I'm good enough. You might not see it, but I see it. And so that has been a hit. And some of the things that I do really well that toot toot I was able to recognize in this process is I'm really good at at marketing. I'm really good at understanding content marketing and understanding how to speak to people like human beings on social media and not just trying to just promote something or mark or what people think marketing is, is to sell and talk at people all the time. Like, no, no, no. Have a conversation. Be a human being. And what I recognize is that it's just something that comes naturally to me, partially because as I've joked in other episodes, I'm like, I'm a little bit of a social media stalker slash just like obsessive person. And I've just always been interested in uh, seeing other people and seeing how what they what makes them tick and how they live their lives. And and because of that, I connect with people on on a different level, I guess, because like I'm not one of those people that's just pushing out stuff like I actually look at your pictures. I look at your stories. You might not even know who I am and you might see me look at your stories like every time you put up a story because I, I might find you interesting. And those are some of the things that people take for granted, but it really is what makes you a good marketing listening. I'm a good listener. I'm a good social listener. I also am not afraid to send a cold email. And that has been so crucial to the Side Hustle Pro process because, yes, I've had people on the show who I know, but I've also had strangers, strangers off the Internet who I just reached out to. And for whatever reason, they were willing to be on the show. And it's because I sent that cold email. I also shared my cold emails with you guys because everything I know I've tried when I have time in this process to share it. Uh, I find that the more you give, the more you get back in life. Just, just you know, life blesses you with double what you put out there. So that's how I kind of approach things. So when I learned to podcast, I created the podcast freebie. I'll put that in the show notes. When I started getting into a rhythm with my cold email pitches, I put that into a document and I put that out there. I'll link to that in the show notes too. When I got a handle of how to really build an engaged following on Instagram, I put that into a course. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. So you see what I mean? Like I am learning as I go, but I definitely try to take the time to share it with folks. And, you know, when I feel like I'm becoming good at something or have become good at something, I'm like, let me share this because like, I think I just tapped into something and it helps me to get better too. Like when I have to sit down, like I'm doing now and actually like write out, okay, what worked and why did it work and have to dissect that? Like it's helpful to me too. So that's another reason why I share. And I said, just everyone do that when you are good at something, take some time out and just like prepare like a a overview and help someone else get good at it because that will in turn increase how good you are. Like people think that if you share what you know, then you lose your competitive advantage. No, you get even better when you become a teacher. So definitely try to do that. So another thing that has been a hit for me is speaking of cold emails, pitching and landing more than one sponsor on my own. So what I've learned from working for a podcast publisher is that a lot of these podcasts, like they have it so easy. Like whoever is a host just gets to record. Someone else does the production. Someone else does the music. Someone else does the advertising. Like I 
don't have anyone else doing the podcast pitches. I do have someone doing the production and I'll get to that in a second, my producer, Chris, but the podcast pitching, like I'm not the, the advertising pitching, the sponsors, that's all me. And it is a long game. It is a long game, longer than I anticipated, but I'm still in it to win it. So getting and landing more than one sponsor on my own, I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of the relationships that I'm building and the way that I am positioning Side Hustle Pro in the market. So I consider that like a win, a win, a win, a win. Speaking of all these hits and misses, I want to get into some of my year one lessons. You guys asked me that in the Facebook community too. And I just dumped them down. Like I just did a brain dump of like the biggest things that I've learned this year. And so number one is to just start. You can master all of the technical stuff later. And that goes for everything, not just a podcast. Like this is not podcast specific. This is what I've learned. But it's like with anything, with any business that you're starting, you have to start. You have to take the first step and things will get better as you go. I didn't know half the things I know now before I started the podcast. Um, Now, because I started it, I have a new lens. So I'm... I am like laser focused when I see an article about podcasting or podcasters or a podcast network, like because I am one, that's what I I zoom in on. And and that's how I learn new things. I'm laser focused on Apple and what's Apple going to do next? And what's this, you know, analytics that they're trying to release and all of those things. So just start. Everything else will come. The other thing is Like I said before, to grow, you have to put in that time and consistency. Know that you'll have dozens, if you're lucky, hundreds of listeners when you start. Like, don't get discouraged by that. That will grow. And if you're doing it right, double, triple, you know, week over week. It's all about consistency. Another thing I learned from this process is to look for the blessing in failure and disappointment. That's something I learned from myself, but also something I learned from my guests. If you listen to to each and every episode, there's always a story of triumph through some failure, some disappointment, some challenge. And so for everything tough that comes across my way, now I try to look for the blessing in it. And, you know, although I was embarrassed to graduate without a job, it was that period that cemented my side hustle resolve. And it was that period of my life that made me decide to do this, not only decide to do this, but I decided then that I would never depend on anyone else to give me a job ever again. Right. So, yes, I'm working for someone, but I know that I'm able to hustle. I'm able to do other things to get money. So I never have to depend on this person or this career. If for some reason somebody wakes up one day and says, Nikayla, you're fired. I now know that I have it in me to go out there, go out there and hunt, go out there and get food, go out there and eat because of the side hustle pro journey that I've been on. And I want to ultimately control my own destiny and make my own money. And that is the blessing, that lens, that viewpoint that came over one of my biggest failures and disappointments. Oh, another big lesson that I learned. Oh, I'm so glad I wrote this down is that no one thing will guarantee success. So I know I like to share my wins, right? I shared most recently when Lead Pages wrote a case study about Side Hustle Pro. Now, understand that. <laughs> All the PR and press that people get, it's great. It's wonderful. And some of my guests talk about this, you know, like Monif C most recently talked about this. It's great when you get publicity, but that doesn't guarantee instance success. Like Oprah's not calling me up to, you know, like $10,000 didn't land in my bank account yesterday because Lee Pages wrote a case study. So all of that is nice. It's great. It It is something to save for the resume and the portfolio and the press hits links on the website. And that will lead to, you know, something to put on the media kit later to attract sponsors and to help them understand who you are. But that one thing didn't get me any particular thing. Like everything is just 
a building block, a building block, a building block in the house that I'm building for myself. So understand that. And I say that because I think at one point, you know, I was like, if I just get to X amount of downloads or better yet, if I just get this particular guest on my show, then it's going to pop. Then it's going to pop. And after a while, I just realized that there's no one pop. Like there's spikes as you go along the way. And that's great. The spikes are awesome. They always lift up, you know, your average downloads each week, but you got to keep grinding to keep those spikes coming. So no one thing will guarantee instant success. Um, Another thing I touched on this before, but I'll touch on this again. I have to learn to work even when I don't want to. That's one of the biggest lessons, like that point blank period. I just have to learn to work even when I don't want to, because this show is not going to make itself. And I love it. I love it. So I have to remember that in the days when life is trying to do everything in its power to make me not love it. Um, Some days you'll feel amazing. Others you won't. Got to keep grinding. And another big lesson for me was that things will come in the right time. There was a time when I think before, you know, President Obama and Michelle Obama left the White House, they had some big event for entrepreneurs. And I like I sent out emails and requests and asked people to nominate me. And I really, really wanted to get to see them before they left the White House and to just be at this day with other people they were recognizing as entrepreneurs and as people impacting other people's lives as it related to entrepreneurship and Lo and behold, I was not selected. I, you know, I saw some of my peers um, there and, and it was, you know, a big bummer. And I had to really take a step back and realize that it's not my time yet. It's not my time. There will be a time. And when that time comes here, I will know. I will know why it didn't happen when I wanted it to happen, but that it happened when it was supposed to happen. And so that's how I've started looking at everything. I talked about this a little bit in the episode where I interviewed my leak teal also in that if I if she'd initially come on my show when I I first met her, like it wouldn't have been the same. I wouldn't have that lens of putting in that work. Um, But it's because I and also I was I was further along in the the podcast process. So I knew how to promote. I had a, a bigger audience. I had a whole Side Hustle Pro Facebook community by the time she came on the show. So I was able to learn how to pitch Apple for a feature. And I was able to get that episode featured in the Apple podcast store, like those kind of things came with time and practice and commitment and work. So I'm so glad that it happened when it did. And I was able to, I felt I was kind of like returning the the favor and the graciousness that she did by coming on the show, by being able to feature her and, and have Apple feature her in the podcast store. So it just felt mutually beneficial. And that would not have happened if it came earlier. So things happen in the right time. Finally, podcasting overall has greatly changed my outlook on entrepreneurship a hundred percent. Like in so many ways, the women on my show give me life. They're like vitamins each and every week because Yes, I'd heard of some of their stories before and yes, I'd read about some of them before, but really getting to listen to them talk about their journey and seeing those common threads. Number one, I definitely know I can do it. Number two, because I saw what it takes to monetize and how you should be thinking to think about a podcast as a business and not just something you do for fun. I was able to take those next steps to form and incorporate my business and to open up a bank account and to start doing business so that I could start hiring staff so I can reach out to sponsors and have them pay me through my LLC and just have it be really official and really legit. So podcasting has definitely changed my outlook on that. And speaking of what's changed for me, My approach to business has changed as well since I started Side Hustle Pro. One of the biggest things is um, I now see, really see the value of getting help. Sometimes even before your monthly paycheck is where you want it to be. 
my producer, Chris Mann of Pot Shaper, reached out to me on a whim, um, cold email. And, you know, we, we did some tests and we went back and forth. We spoke on email. We talked about what it should be like. And lo and behold, we started working together. And, you know, at the time it was kind of like, it was before I'd, I'd even signed my first sponsor. So it was like, oh, this is coming out of, this is coming just out of my regular paycheck. And I'm like, oh, is it worth it? Like, can I just keep doing what I've been doing? Um, you know, people seem to be listening. There doesn't seem to be a problem. But not only did he understand audio and mixing and editing better than I did, but also there was just such a sense of relief in being able to record an episode and hand it over to finally be able to take something off my plate. The biggest thing that I've learned through this process, I keep saying the biggest thing and there have been like 10 biggest things, but truly, truly, honestly, truly, what starting to work with the producer taught me is that just because you can do something in your business doesn't mean you should. Like you could take it all, you could spread yourself thin if you wanted to and still be able to somehow make it work. But does that mean you should? And so slowly, it also made me start to grind harder because I knew I wanted to pay for this. So I knew I wanted a sponsor so that it could start to, you know, I could start to pay out of um, my business funds and not out of my personal funds. So that motivated me to grind even harder. And I'm continuing to grind harder because, as I said, the sponsorship process is a long game, not a short game. So that is ongoing. And, and that's what I've learned, too. I have to look at that as a marriage and not a sprint. It's going to be an ongoing process. But hiring that first member of the team has just changed my outlook completely. And the next member of the team that I'm looking to hire is a social media intern. So if you guys haven't already, I posted about it on all of my social channels. So please, if you know someone who is interested in learning under my guidance about social media and social media marketing, tell them to fill out the application. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Don't just email or tweet me or Facebook me. There is a real live application to fill out so that I can assess your skills. But yes, I'm really looking forward to getting some assistance in the social media space as well. So my goals, what's next for Side Hustle Pro? Well, first and foremost, I have a wedding coming up, so I can't wait to do that. Go on a, a quick little mini moon and take some time to just refocus because for the past all of 2017 really it's felt like my head is spinning like I want to concentrate on this but you know I gotta check on RSVPs or I want to concentrate on this but oh my gosh should I remember to reply to the cake person like so I'm looking forward to not having this ongoing checklist and worries about what I forgot to do in my head and being able to completely focus again on Side Hustle Pro. But I digress. I am focused for the remainder of this year on sharing my knowledge and building platforms and resources so I can teach others how to grow their businesses in the same way I've been able to grow Side Hustle Pro and especially how to build brand awareness. Um, I started with Master the Gram, but I think I want to help people see like the bigger picture. It's not just about Instagram followers. There's a much bigger picture to me. It's like I started this. No one knew about it. So I had to go out there and make sure people knew about it. Why? Because you could have phenomenal content, but if no one knows it's there, then you're not impacting any lives. You're not doing business. So that is why brand awareness is important. And I want to definitely focus more on helping people for the remainder of the year. I want to travel more. I want to be able to work from anywhere in the world. And someone asked me where I see myself in five years. I for sure will be a full time entrepreneur. Mark my words. So guys, there you have it. That is a year of Side Hustle Pro. I can't wait to, you know, see the people who will come on over to the Side Hustle Pro Facebook group. And if you have other questions about the Side Hustle Pro journey, the podcast, what I've done, tactics, just hit me up in the group and let's talk some more. So there you have it. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. 
If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community. Go to sidehustlepro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Thank you.